It's time for 49ers versus Chiefs. This is the first look, taking a look at everything that's different, everything that has changed, and at what to expect for this 49ers versus Chiefs game. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a great episode. Join me for 49ers Cutback. at the stick from who's got it better than us to brick by brick it's always the 49ers way from off season to game day yeah we talk back it's the 49ers cut back It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Time for the 49ers first Chiefs first look. And in this one, I want to talk about some things that have changed since the last time the two teams met, uh, some of the injuries that both teams are dealing with, and just kind of paint the picture for what this game looks like as far as some of the key matchups and key ways that the coaching staffs are going to have to uh, take advantage of the opposing team. It's time to start setting the groundwork for what is going to be a really good football game. And why is it going to be a really good football game? Well, there's two good football teams. The Kansas City Chiefs are coming in undefeated, and their defense has been on point all season. And then with the offense, it's always just like, not a matter of if, but when are they going to get things going? And they always seem to get it going. Patrick Mahomes is still Patrick Mahomes, and he can create better than any other quarterback in the entire NFL. Off-schedule plays are his specialty. But if you give him time in the pocket, He'll kill you there, too. Then you look over at Travis Kelsey, and he continues to be a consistent receiving threat in a team that has somewhat been dealt with, dealing with injuries at wide receiver since the onset of the season. So we're going to talk about that and what they're doing at wide receiver and why the 49ers still have some tough matchups for their cornerback and safety group. It's not going to be easy, easy peasy because they're missing a couple of guys. It's going to be really difficult for this 49ers secondary to compete with the Kansas City Chiefs, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. There are certain ways to attack this offense that could put you in key situations to get off the field on third down. Then when you look offensively, the 49ers were able to move the ball last year against the Chiefs, but you got to be able to score a lot of points. And it's not easy to do against a Chiefs defense that barely gives up over 16 points per game. They have been efficient and effective for years now. Coach Bagnola is one of the best defensive coordinators in the league. And in fact, the 49ers even called about potentially trading for him during the offseason. That's how good he is. They bring the aggressiveness. They bring the physicality. They bring the athleticism. It's really one of the toughest defenses you're going to see in the entire NFL. And the 49ers offense is able to move the ball consistently against the Chiefs. That's going to be something that everyone should take notice of. And the 49ers should be able to move the ball. They, in fact, are one of the best teams at moving the ball up and down the field this season. They punt the ball, number 32 in the league. They rarely punt. Third and out, a three and out, one of the, the best in the league. They don't go three and out very often. They are also winning time of possession. They are consistently doing all those things. Now, where they suffer the most is that they are number one when it comes to getting field goals on drives. They haven't been able to capitalize in the red zone and it doesn't get easier going against a Kansas City Chiefs team that's really good in the red zone either. So this is going to be fun. I'm excited to get into it. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, really appreciate that. If you're listening to audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe Network, please give it a five-star rating. Uh, please go ahead and leave a review. That will go a long way in helping out me, pushing this content out to uh, more people so more people can get it involved in 49ers cutback so i appreciate that and of course if you are going to bet just like if you're going to bet on sunday 49ers are a one point or one and a half point favorite right now if you're interested in betting bet with bet online bet online is world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything sports betting every stat matchup breakdown even live odds and spreads to bet on during games with the largest catalog of odds on everything from football to Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, NBA, to political props. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. 
Head to the website today to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet online. The game starts here. So the first thing I wanted to see is what has really changed from last season. And when you look at the Chiefs coaching staff, nothing's changed. They've kept everything the same throughout this historic run that they've been on. Uh, they've still got Andy Reid pulling all the strings when it comes to the offense. They've still got one of the best defensive coordinators in Spagnola. He's been really, really good uh, for years now, and he's just a really good mind. He knows how to pull the right strings at the right times, and they've done great. When you look at the 49ers, though, 49ers did have a big, significant change from when we last left off with the Chiefs. Out goes Steve Wilkes, and Steve Wilkes' defense actually played really well in the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. They kept them under wraps pretty much the entire game until the end when Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs made key plays when they needed to make it. But overall, it was a good performance. But now it's Nick Sorensen. And Sorensen's defense started out rough this season. Uh, definitely didn't get off to the best start. Made some key critical mistakes against the Minnesota Vikings in Week 2 that cost the 49ers a victory. That was frustrating for sure. But since then, he somewhat righted the ship. Coverages have been a lot better. He's not getting stuck uh, in bad situations. They fixed how they're covering bunch sets a lot better. More run blitzes have led to uh, lighter boxes, not having to run eight men in the box as much, but seven-man boxes, which help you in the passing game, but still able to stop that run. They have just continued to get better and better, and their run fits have gotten better and better. So it feels like Nick Sorensen's got his footing for the 49ers defense, and that's important because guess what? It doesn't get any easier when you're going against the number one quarterback in the entire uh, league and Patrick Mahomes. And even if he's not playing up to the level that Patrick Mahomes has played in his career, it doesn't mean anything because just like that, he can flip a switch and he goes from being a player that's struggling to a player that's out of this world and can make any throw at any time. So you have to constantly be on guard and prepared to deal with Patrick Mahomes. You never can let your foot off the gas. You can never get comfortable. You have to play 60 minutes of consistent football if you're going to win. And you have to play complimentary football if you're going to win. Hall of Fame coach, Hall of Fame quarterback, that puts you in a bad situation. Then you add in Hall of Fame defensive tackle and Chris Jones, and you add in Travis Kelsey. He'll be a Hall of Famer as well. So they've got a lot of talent. So let's get into a little bit about some of the players that won't be on the field and some things that have changed since last season. Well, first off for the Chiefs, they no longer have Legereus Sneed. Uh, they traded him during the offseason to the Tennessee Titans. And Legereus Sneed was a big problem for the 49ers. He was able to cover Ayuk and Debo one-on-one, -on -one, and that was a real problem. And they went across the board man sometimes and locked down 49ers wide receivers. Give them credit. Al goes Legereus Sneed. They still got a talented cornerback room. We'll talk about that in a little bit. 49ers, out goes Eric Armstead. Out goes Chase Young. Out goes Tayshawn Gibson. All three of those starters in the Super Bowl that were making an impact and helping in some way uh, for this 49ers football team. So those are some significant losses. And there's other losses to, the, to the, each team this season. The Chiefs are going to be without running back Isaiah Pacheco. And that really hurts because he's got that that speed, that aggressiveness, that style of run. Uh, he was good in the Super Bowl last year. 49ers held him down for the most part, but he did have some big carries. They're without Rasheed Rice. He's probably out for the entire season with a bad knee injury. In fact, I think they did say he's out with a leg injury. Hollywood Brown, he's out. Never even really got started this season. They thought they were adding all that speed. Uh, it wasn't the case, so he's out. Charles Aminahu, he did not play in the Super Bowl last year, and he continues to be out. Uh, former 49er Charles Amini, who will not be playing in this game either. Now, for the 49ers, they're, of course, without Christian McCaffrey, who was absolutely so important to the 49ers Super Bowl last season. McCaffrey's matchup problem for any team that he plays. He's not coming back, and we don't know when we'll see him, maybe after the bye. Greg Greenlaw was so big in the Super Bowl for the first half, goes down with the Achilles. He's still recovering from that. He's out. Hufanga, he came back. And then all of a sudden, he suffered a torn ligament in his wrist. Now he's out. He's on IR. Javon Hargrave, he's out for the year. 49ers kicker, Jake Moody, who had big field goals last year in the Super Bowl. He's out with a sprained ankle. So injuries to both teams are going to affect these starting lineups. 
Now, some things that have come from that is Clyde Edwards Hilaire is being activated. He was on the non-injury football list. He's going to be activated. The likelihood is he'll be ready to play in this football game. But they also signed Kareem Hunt. And Kareem Hunt is a very talented player for um, the Chiefs. You know, And that's the thing. You need to make sure you can bring in guys that can consistently make plays. Well, he's consistent and comfortable because he's played within this system already. He already was a Kansas City Chief. And he was just sitting out there on the open market waiting for his opportunity, and he got it. And he's been seizing that opportunity. He's already the Chiefs' leading rusher through just two games. So Kareem Hunt, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, and, of course, they had signed Samadre P. Ryan. He's going to be available. Carson Steele, we'll see him as well, the undrafted free agent. So they've still got talent when it comes to running back, so they're not hurting from the fact that they do not have Isaiah Pacheco. Now, the 49ers, they signed safety Adrian Amos, and they needed to go ahead and bring somebody in. There were some a little bit of problems last week as far as the 49ers kickoff team where we had Jalen Mahoney, the undrafted free agent rookie safety. He was playing. He missed the tackle. That LaVisca Chanel got a big touchdown. That could be part of it. But also, Malik Mustafa is dealing with a low ankle sprain. And so he was working on a side field on Monday. I'm sure they are hoping he's going to progress nicely and be able to play against Kansas City. But bringing in a safety and a veteran safety, Amos was drafted in the fifth round out of Penn State five years ago. So he's a talented guy who's been around the league a little bit, played in Green Bay, but last year played in, with the New York Jets and Robert Sala. So familiarity with the system is going to make it a quick transition. But you have George Odom, you have Jair Brown. You don't want to have to rely on Jalen Mahoney to get significant snaps against Patrick Mahomes. So you bring in Amos, he's good at making tackles. Last year, he had a 72 uh, grade in PFF. Uh, did a really good job, really good tackler, really good against the run. So bring in a guy with speed, athleticism, who's been around the league a little bit. Great signing for the 49ers. They add him to the practice squad. They can elevate him if they need to. They also signed kicker Andres Carlson to the practice squad as well. And Carlson had been the kicker last year for Green Bay. In fact, he missed the big field goal in the playoffs that allowed the 49ers to complete their comeback against the Green Bay Packers. So uh, Carlson comes in, lots of questions about Matthew Wright. 49ers kicker Matthew Wright has only been with the team one year, was perfect in field goals in that one game that he played for the 49ers last week. But the kickoffs were very short. Uh, Andres Carlson not didn't have a great touchback rate last year, so that's a little interesting. Maybe he's better at it now. But the 49ers need somebody that can kick the ball out of the end zone or at least require the opposing team to take touchbacks on kickoffs. The coverage team hasn't been good enough this season, uh, whether that's injuries or, in some cases, ineffectiveness as far as making tackles. Talked about the big LaVisca Chenault touchdown. That's very much on Jalen Mahoney and on Jalen Graham. Those guys got to make those plays. So 49ers bring on a new kicker. We'll see. Carlson could be elevated for this football game. In fact, him and Amos might be elevated. And just a little bit of roster news so you know, 49ers did waive Terrace Marshall, wide receiver Terrace Marshall, who they had picked up from Carolina when he was released, surprisingly. The 49ers now move on from him. So wide receivers remaining on the practice squad, Tariq o Owens, the son of Terrell Owens, he's still on there, and Trent Taylor, who the 49ers have elevated already once this season. So those are just some things, uh, you know, that we got to clear up as we're going through this. And I'm sure there's going to be more movement over the next several weeks as people keep refining their rosters and have to deal with these injuries that have been really big. So let's talk about some of the key matchups in this football game. Just kind of start getting this set up. And it's got to start with Kareem Hunt. Uh, Kareem Hunt has done a very good job this season. I've been very impressed over the two games. I sat down and I watched what he did against the Saints before the Chiefs. You know, the Chiefs are coming off a bye. And I watched that game. And I thought Kareem Hunt really handled himself well. He looked good. Uh, the balance, the vision, he looked like the Kareem Hunt that we all remember. So uh, he's going to be a, a force that the 49ers are going to have to stop. And how are they going to do it? Are they going to do what they did early on in the season where they showed a lot of eight-man boxes, very aggress aggressive with a second safety in the box, and just said, you know what? We're going to make you one-dimensional. 
we're going to take away the the run game. You're going to have to beat us passing. That might be a a tough situation to go against Patrick Mahomes. But then the answer, the question is, can you stop Kareem Hunt and the Kansas City Chiefs running game with a seven man box? The 49ers were able to stop the Seattle Seahawks running game with a seven man box. They consistently ran two high safeties and they were just aggressive up front with run blitzes from the linebackers. They played hard edges with good defensive end play. And then the defensive tackles were able to shed blocks, hold their ground when they needed to against duos and be able to get in and make tackles. So that's going to be one of the big things. I believe that Nick Sorensen is probably going to have to mix it up this week. You're not going to be able to entirely run two men, uh, two, two high safety looks, and you're not going to be able to load up and put eight men in the box consistently because Patrick Mahomes is going to have the freedom that if he sees an eight man box, he's going to throw the ball. If he sees a two high safety, he's going to run it. So the 49ers need to make sure they do a good job as far as run fits when they're in seven man boxes and try to slow down Kareem Hunt and this running game, which means Nick Sorensen's going to have to be aggressive with his run blitzes and try to take advantage of getting uh, light boxes and able to stop the run. So that's going to be one of the matchups I'm really looking forward to when it comes to the defense is how Nick Sorensen handles that with eight or seven man boxes because the Chiefs don't run a lot of 12 and 20, 21 personnel. Uh, but, you know, you could get some 12 personnel looks, get the 49ers in base sets, and see if they can take advantage of matchups of 49ers linebackers on Travis Kelsey and others. And that's what my next one is. Matching up with Travis Kelsey, how are you going to do it? Last year, the 49ers were able to use Drake Greenlaw, Fred Warner, Deshaun Gibson to kind of shadow him in different looks, uh, run some zone coverages where sometimes they were able to bracket him and take him away. And before Drake Greenlaw was hurt in that Super Bowl game, the 49ers had held Travis Kelsey to one catch for one yard, and that was on a screen. So they had a very detailed, very good game plan for taking away Travis Kelsey. And that is a big reason why the 49ers defense was slowing down the Chiefs. Attention to detail as far as slowing down Isaiah Pacheco and then slowing down Travis Kelsey. Now, Rasheed Rice was still having success, but guess what? Rasheed Rice is not going to be playing in this game. So 49ers definitely got to figure out how they're going to slow down Travis Kelsey and handle him this season. Is it is it as simple as going ahead and putting a guy like D. Winters on him? I don't think so. Is it a combination of Jair Brown, D. Winters, you know, and others? Fred Warner, yes. Uh, Fred Warner of the linebackers is the most equipped to handle a big physical body like Travis Kelsey. As far as Jair Brown, he's been physical enough to handle tight ends, but we'll see. Uh, but that's going to be interesting. How do you funnel Travis Kelsey where you want him to be, especially when he doesn't adhere to any of the rules of the offense? He has the freedom to go wherever he wants. So there's no tendencies usually on where Travis Kelsey is going to be or where he's going to sit down in zones. He has the ability to run through him, do whatever he wants. It makes covering him a little bit more difficult. Now, on offense as well, how do you handle Xavier Worthy's speed? And this is going to be a big question mark because the 49ers have gotten beat deep a few times this season. You look at explosive plays down the field, and I think when you look at what happened against Minnesota, that's the first one. You cannot allow players to get down the field like Justin Jefferson did where he got a matchup on the safety and the safety bit on something that looked like it was going over the middle and then you have the explosive for a big touchdown. 90-plus yard touchdowns should not exist against this 49ers defense. Do not allow them to take the top off the defense like that. The difference is Justin Jefferson's fast, but Xavier Worthy is even faster. And last week, we saw DK Metcalf get behind 49ers safeties on two occasions. One, George Odom was able to make up ground because Bosa got pressure on uh, Geno Smith and made him throw off his back foot. But the other one would have been a touchdown if it wasn't for an illegal shift by the Seattle Seahawks. Those types of things should make the 49ers a little nervous. They've got to make sure they know where Xavier Worthy is. Now, if I'm 49ers cornerbacks this week, I want to get physical with him. If I'm in the, in the, the first five yards, I want to push him. I want to shove him. I want to get as physical as I can if I'm Diamond Lenore, Isaac Yedem, Charverius Ward, Renardo Green, whoever's out there, because he is slight. So being able to get up on him is going to be important. Now, Andy Reid, of course, could uh, put him in the slot, have him off the ball, 
to create that natural separation. If natural separation is created by Andy Reid, either by him being a guy in motion and movement or a guy that's not on the line of scrimmage, then I expect the 49ers to give extra space. Go ahead and give a cushion. Go ahead and maybe get a little bit deeper in your back pedal than you normally would. If normally you would roll over and start running with someone at 10, then I want to make sure you're backpedaling to at least 12 or 13 and keeping more of a cushion so Xavier Worthy just doesn't run over you or run past you. And if he's going to break it off and make some catches underneath, that's okay. Make them consistently do that. When he does make the catch, make him pay for it. Hit him hard. Be physical. Be uh, aggressive with him. So it's going to be one of those things. If you can get your hands on it, do it. You'll mess up the timing of the route. If you're not able to, then play off, give him space, and then just drive on the football when the ball's thrown. But that's going to be a tough matchup for the 49ers. That's a lot of speed to be able to handle. And it's not so much that he's a volume catcher. He's not going to go out there and catch eight balls for 140 yards and light you up. But all of a sudden, he catches two balls, and one of those goes for 75 and a touchdown. Those are those game-changing moments that the 49ers are going to have to worry about. And when you're looking at the other wide receivers that they have, I mean, they brought back Juju Smith-Schuster, which, you know, Juju has been very solid for them. He continues to be a guy that can catch screens, can get open over the middle, that knows how to find soft spots and zones. Uh, he's not as good as a guy like Rasheed Rice, who has been a guy that could do it all. But still, he's really talented, and the 49ers are going to have to worry about him. And then how about Justin Watson? I mean, Justin Watson continues to just find ways to get open and make plays. And then they've got a couple of speed demons behind that, including Sky Moore and McCall Hardman. So the 49ers are just going to have to make sure they don't allow the plays deep down the field with Hardman. Once again, make him just like Xavier worthy beat you underneath. And I don't think he can consistently make those plays. So that's going to be one of the matchups I'm looking for. Don't allow Xavier worthy to have big plays. If he's lined up in the slot against the Lenore, watch out for the slot fade. 49ers have to be prepared for that. And it's not because of DeAndre Lenore. It's because Xavier Worthy is really fast. Wanya Morris and Jawan Taylor versus Bosa and Floyd is going to be huge in this game. So uh, early on in the season, the first two weeks, the Chiefs started young rookie Kingsley Suomatia at left tackle. Uh, he was getting absolutely abused, and they put in Wanya Morris. And now it's been Wanya Morris. But uh, going back and watching that Saints game, I seen Chase Young able to uh, get a lot of really good pass rush against Wanya Morris. And once again, Jawan Taylor continues to grab, to jump off sides, to get holding penalties. He is still the most penalized offensive tackle in the entire league. But the Chiefs weren't willing to give a lot of help. They weren't chipping. They weren't giving double teams towards the two edge defenders for New Orleans. And one of those was Chase Young. But will they be willing to do that to Bosa? Maybe Bosa, probably not so much on the other side. So when are you going to get matchups that you like? I would love to see Leonard Floyd be able to handle Wanya Morris and handle Jawan Taylor. So I'm really excited about this. And will the Chiefs go ahead and and put a player out there to chip or check and help on Bosa and kind of release those guys late? When that happens, you don't have as many guys out in routes initially for Patrick Mahomes. So the, it changes the way that the coverage pl is played. It changes the route concepts. So being, having them pay attention to Bosa could be significant in this game. And do the 49ers bring an extra pass rusher? We've seen Coach Nick Sorensen bring an extra guy either in the middle or off the edge with like Diama Lenore on a blitz or a safety to allow Nick Bosa a one-on-one -on -one look that he wouldn't normally get because of them chipping and helping out. So will Nick Sorensen be willing to do uh, blitzes? It's one thing to do a simulated blitz where you show Fred Warner's going to come or you show Devondre Campbell and then they bail. It's a whole other thing to actually come after Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes can make you pay. Now, you can also get after Mahomes and you can kind of close up some of those areas where he likes to move around the pocket, find space and get rid of the ball. But you have to be willing to take the chance. So how much do you play with that? He's playing with fire when you're going against Patrick Mahomes and you're hoping that, that you're going to be able to slow him down enough where it doesn't burn you. So that's going to be one of the interesting matchups. You know you have an advantage with your edge rushers against their offensive tackles. But seeing how they play it, if they're going to chip, and how aggressive you want to be with bringing someone extra. 49ers would love to just rush four. In fact, if the 49ers' perfect defensive setup would be, 
They play two high safety. They're willing to, they can stop the run with seven in the box. They can rush with just four and get pressure on Patrick Mahomes and have seven guys to drop in coverage and try to slow down them. And that would be the most effective defense. Can the 49ers do that? I don't know. And let's see what happens if Nick Sorensen's able to kind of bring some heat and capitalize on opportunities of getting both either on one on one situations or getting one of those uh, secondary defenders home in a blitz. And how will the 49ers plan to attack Kansas City's aggressive defense? So now I'm flipping over to the offensive side of the football, and I'm looking at this, and I, I, I saw Kyle Shannon and the way that he handled Minnesota Vikings la- or in Week 2. is When he's playing a very aggressive defense, it was like that against Cleveland. It's, it was like that in the Super Bowl last year against Kansas City. Is He likes to prevent negative plays. And as somebody who was a play caller, I know that that was one of my main objectives too. I would rather get three, two or three yards on a play and not risk the chance of having some sort of big negative that's going to put you minus three or minus four because then it's hard to make up those yards against a very good defense. So staying ahead of the sticks is really important, and three yards helps you stay ahead of the sticks. But you've got to make sure you mix in the aggressive calls. And I thought that he did a pretty good job against the Chiefs last year mixing in aggressive calls with screens, you know, the throwback passes with Jawan, like kind of taking some things out of the norm and putting them in the game. But when teams are willing to blitz you, they have the potential to blow up some of your plays. I think you just have to do the best you can about knowing, hey, negatives can happen, but also if they guess wrong, we can have explosives. So being aggressive and not too conservative against an aggressive football team in fear of negative plays is key. I think there's going to be situations where you are conservative, and then there's situations where you're aggressive, and Kyle's got to figure that out. So he's got to be willing to kind of push the envelope a little bit against this Chiefs defense and not be afraid of negative plays like he was this year against Minnesota. And part of that's going to be establishing the run game. If you have the opportunity to run the football, and we don't know, is it going to be Jordan Mason? Is it going to be Isaac Garendo? Uh, my guess is Jordan Mason is going to give this thing a whirl. They haven't signed a running back or talked about the fact they could bring someone up from the practice squad. But he has the AC joint sprain. He had the blue jersey on practicing on Monday. Let's hope that he progresses nicely and he's able to play in this game. They they could use Jordan Mason, a one-two punch with him and Garendo, and Garendo's still getting better. He's got a lot of work to do. And so Jordan Mason is key in this football game as far as running the ball because – if the 49ers could establish a consistent run game, that would take some of the aggressiveness out of the Kansas City Chiefs. And I don't mean aggressiveness as far as they're not going to blitz. They will. What I'm saying is maybe with some of their coverages on the backside, because if you're hyper-aggressive on stopping the run and your linebackers start engaging earlier, they're not going to be able to help in coverage on the back end, which will open up some opportunities over the middle for Kyle Shanahan's offensive or Brock Purdy to get the ball to Debo and to Brandon Ayuk. So you want to be aggressive in stopping the run. That's great. It opens things up for the 49ers play action passing game. But that doesn't happen unless the 49ers establish a good running game against a Chiefs defense who does a very good job stopping the run. They give up 85 yards per game on the ground. That's phenomenal. Now they're going against a 49ers run offense that averages over 150 yards a game. So it's it's real, been really good this season. So this is strength on strength, and why not, right? When you've got a defensive line like Kansas City has and linebacker play that's aggressive and they play a really good technique, it's going to make for a tough game for the 49ers. But they need to establish the run game, slow down that Chiefs defense, or make them be even more aggressive in coming after you, stopping the run, and allowing some other opportunities for you to be able to throw the football. But I expect for the Chiefs to run some heavy box looks early. I expect them to run blitz and try to put the onus on Brock Purdy early. So Brock Purdy, just like every other quarterback, is going to look at the defense. He sees an eight-man box. you got two options. Number one, you check to a pass play and you try to throw the ball. Or number two, you count numbers. If you go back and you watch the last play by Isaac Garendo, the big run down the sideline, Uh, That play is Brock Purdy counting numbers. It's an eight-man box, right? It's not a run-friendly box. But on the, on the, the left side, they had five defenders. On the right side, they had four defenders 
that were able to help out. And then they had a couple of guys here and there with a safety deep. You get the picture. And they were in an even set. So they knew they had an advantage to the four defender side. They ran the football. They made the key blocks. And boom, there you go. Big time run for the San Francisco 49ers. So you can handle it both ways. You can count left and right, which is always a good idea, especially with an outside zone play. Uh, those guys on the backside are basically useless uh, for the defense. Or you can throw the football depending on what look you like and what matchups you're giving. And a lot of times, Kyle Shanahan's motion and shifts will divulge what coverage you're going to be in. Is it man? Is it zone? It gives you a real clear picture. So then you can really go, oh, you know what? If I can this, I've got Debo on a nice matchup against a linebacker that I like in space, and we can take advantage of that. So there's a lot of that that goes into it. There's a lot of things that play through your mind. But just because it's an eight-man box doesn't mean you can't run, but you have to find the numbers that work. And if the numbers aren't going to work, then check to the other play and go ahead and throw it. I think the 49ers are really going to miss Christian McCaffrey in this game. Uh, he would have been very significant in that matchup against Bolton uh, and this Kansas City Chiefs linebacker room, which is really talented. They've got good linebackers, but I would have liked him out there if they could have got a cool matchup with him with Tranquil. I would have liked that, um, but they don't have you know Christian McCaffrey in this game. And so that's going to put the 49ers a little bit in a disadvantage because their running backs right now, even though have made catches, Jordan Mason's made a couple catches here and there. He's definitely not Christian McCaffrey. Now Kyle Shanahan's going to have to find a creative way to get his receivers open. And one of the ways you do that is everyone kind of gets accustomed to your route concepts. Oh, I'm going to run this. I'm going to run that. And they know that it's a certain, a certain uh, level. Like I'm running up eight, you know, I'm breaking to 10 and then breaking across. Like there's certain levels or certain distances, there's certain tendencies to when you run certain things. And so Kyle Shanahan's got a break tendency in this one. When you're going against a really good defense and you're running your route tree and you run concepts consistently the same way, it's nice to throw in a wrinkle here and there. Still run your same thing sometimes. You know, I mean, you want it, you don't want to change and reinvent the wheel, but here and there, like all of a sudden, a let's say Jawan Jennings is supposed to be running a Dover route, right? Which is a play that's going to go up and it's going to come across. It's the dig and the over, right? Coming all the way across the field. And all of a sudden he does just like he's going to run the dig and then he breaks to the corner. Now that safety might jump on that because he saw the concept and he saw exactly what was supposed to happen. And now you broke off. You have the opportunity for a big play. So throwing in some subtle adjustments for Kyle Shanahan could be huge in this football game. And that could be creative ways to get his receiver open by breaking normal tendencies on his route depth and concepts. So it's going to be one of those games. You don't want to do it too much. You want to stick with what you do, but subtle ones here and there could make for explosives or big time third down conversions or big time plays down the field. And there's going to be opportunities for the 49ers to go down the field. Brock Purdy is going to have a chance to unleash some balls down the field. The aggressive style that the Chiefs play opened them up to big plays down the field, and I expect Brock Purdy will throw a couple of those. Getting George Kittle matched up on linebackers will be huge. You couldn't take it, you can't take advantage of the Christian McCaffrey one, but getting George Kittle those matchups could be huge. And a lot of times when the Chiefs are trying to be aggressive, they will bring a safety or they'll bring a linebacker, and it'll create a matchup for the tight end of the opposing team to have a one-on-one -on -one look or at least a good look going up the field in zone. And those are times that the 49ers really need to get the ball to George Kittle, who's been really good this year, especially in the red zone. And he's going to be a red zone threat again in this game. But just finding those matchups is going to be huge. And I think that a lot of times these teams will somewhat ignore George Kittle in certain situations and the 49ers can take advantage of it. So getting those matchups when a defense is aggressive is going to be key. You want to be aggressive? That's fine. You live by the fire, you die by the fire. And that's the thing. You want to be aggressive and come after him? Well, here's Kittle one-on-one -on -one with Tranquil in space. Kittle all day on that one. And that's exactly what the 49ers can do. The onus on the offensive line is going to be huge this week. First off, where's 95? They want to find Chris Jones every single play. I expect them to test Dominic Pooney, but I really expect them to test Aaron Banks. Now, on third down, get ready, Colt McKivich. You're going to see Chris Jones. Just watching what the Seahawks did with Leonard Williams last week, they're going to test Banks. They're going to test Colt McKivitz. 
they're going to move him around. And it's not just Chris Jones, which makes it very difficult. Chris Jones, of course, is absolutely fantastic. But they also have George Karolaftis, who can bring pressure off the edge. He's done a very good job. Mike Dana is questionable for this game, but he's played very well uh, in this season so far. So they've got the necessary talent out there to be able to bring pressure. And so the 49ers are going to have to make sure they stick with it. They're going to have to make sure they manage where everyone's going to be. They have to pick up blitzes. Nick Brendel's got to make good calls this week. He's got to slide protect the right way. He's got to make sure he's on his P's and Q's. And 49ers can't have mistakes. But first option is find 95. Never let 95 wreck this football game. 49ers have been used to these sort of game plans before as they played Aaron Donald every single year. And it feels like they play the Chiefs every year too. So you've got to make sure you locate him. Make sure you give him attention. And you've got to hold up. 49ers offensive line has been better against the pass this season. They are number 13 overall in the league in traditional pass sets. So that's not play action. That's not moving the pocket. That's traditional pass sets. They're 13 best in the league. That's pretty good job. Top half, really good. And that's even with Jake Brendel being uh, kind of ranked really low. So the guards and the tackles have really picked it up for the 49ers when it comes to uh, blocking. But uh, Chris Jones is a game wrecker. You just go watch their game versus Kansas City. I'm sorry, Kansas City versus the New Orleans Saints. And you see on every single play, it just feels like that defensive line is getting a surge and a push. They are aggressive. Uh, so the 49ers offensive line has got a tough matchup in this. Now, Brock Purdy is going to be asked to navigate a couple of things. First off, he's got to figure out what play to get the 49ers in. And it starts with reading the defense. Do we have a two-eye safety look? That means we have a light box. Can we run the football? Do we have a heavy box and we need to throw the football? Or we need to count numbers. That's going to be very pivotal for Brock Purdy this week, getting the 49ers into the right look, the right play. And then after that, you know, throwing the football or handing off whatever. But the initial before the pre snap reads are going to be huge in this game. That's one of the ways you negate the effectiveness of Spagnola's aggressive style defense is by using their aggressiveness against them. The only way you can do that is if you recognize what you're looking at. Now, after that, you have to know where your hot routes are going to be. And hopefully Kyle Shanahan, and I, I believe he will, is going to have the hot routes be different than what they normally are. Because when defenses know kind of what your hot routes are going to be, then what they do is they plan for those. They're going to go ahead and bring pressure. They're going to show pressure, bring pressure, and then they're going to take away your initial hot route and make it difficult for your quarterback to find the open man. So the 49ers can vary that and change it up. And that's part of the what I was talking about, your concepts and your adjustments as far as what you normally do. The built-in hot's got to be different this week. And Brock's got to be willing to take what's there. If it's going to be the hot route, go ahead and get it out. If there's another look that you like, you feel like you can pick it up, go ahead and do that. And when you get that aggressive shot down the field, and you're going to get a couple in this football game, and they're too aggressive, take the shot down the field. You get that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Brandon Ayuk in a safety, or you get that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Debo in a safety. Go ahead and take it. Be willing to take the shots. And we know Brock Purdy has been willing, and there's going to be opportunities in this game. So it's going to be fun, and a lot of it's going to be Brock Purdy figuring out what the 49ers have to do. Shanahan's going to give him the best plays possible, but then Brock Purdy's got to get him in the best play possible. And he's been really good with that so far this season. He's been good, in fact, through his entire career. But that's where the matchup is going to be. Spagnola. He's going to dial it up, but if Brock can figure it out, the 49ers have a really good shot of moving the ball, and we've seen them move the ball consistently well this season. They almost had 500 yards against the Seahawks last week, but they're not the only ones. They've moved the ball consistently all year long. Red zone effectiveness is going to be a key in this game, and of course, during this week, we're going to go through more. We're going to get into the numbers and talk about 49ers versus Chiefs even more, uh, so this is going to be a fun one. Of course, join me tomorrow. Uh, 2 p.m. for the Red and Bold Show. Me and Mark Adams will be talking about the 49ers and the Chiefs. And then, of course, breaking down what happened in the Seattle Seahawks game. And then Thursday, right, the coach approach with John Chapman. So go check that out. We're going to have the Madden Sim this week, the game preview, lots of content. And if you like film breakdowns, head on over to Patreon. Uh, the first half of the Seahawks is available offense and defense. Go check that out. And the second half will be coming just shortly. So uh, don't miss out on that if you're interested in those breakdowns. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really appreciate it. If you're listening to audio platform, 40 yards cutback on Believe Network. Please give it a five-star rating and leave a review. It helps me out a lot. 
especially if they're a good review. Uh, so I appreciate that. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. The game starts here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay safe. Remember, the right way is always the 49ers way.